Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Fun Bearable. I'm Brad Rohr. Hello, enemies. Welcome to Fun Bearable. I'm Ray Harrington. Hello, troubled acquaintances. <laughs> Those are I'm, my people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chuck Staten. Uh, we're very excited to uh, have you all here for this uh, fun special episode. Yeah, very, 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 very special and kind of strange episode yes. for a yes. podcast. Brad's going to show us his nipple piercing. Here Ew. We go. <laughs> it's, no, one, it's not the one you think. Here's yeah. what's crazy it's one piercing that goes through both. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, stop yeah. moving. <laughs> you said you liked it because you could change out the baubles? Yeah. It's. <laughs> It's, it's like croc charms, except he, yeah. he pulls it's them over. It's a Pandora nipple piercing. Yeah. Every, every year he counts another year left on his life. <laughs> there's, only, there's only one bead left yeah. on this side, yeah. guys. <laughs> oh, uh, those are called, you, you have to know. Abacus. 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 Yeah. Thank you. So Thank what you. are we really Good here for? Good name for a shitty kid. <laughs> Abacus, right? Yeah. Abacus. Abacus. Was, Abacus. Uh, Harper Lee's first draft. Oh, ready? ready? Always. Yes, I'm calling about Abacus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Abacus, get down. He's always kicking the animals. <laughs> <laughs> the animals. Yeah. Well, right. on the farm. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know. Open um, the actual episode. The horses. <laughs> this, the horses. Uh, this episode uh, features some footage uh, captured at Rhode Island Comic Con 2022, uh, featuring a panel of uh, voice actors. Uh, the voices specifically of Pinky and the Brain, Woo. Rob Paulson, and Maurice LaMarche. And I was fortunate enough to get to uh, moderate this panel and then throw it to the audience for questions. Yes. Uh, Rob and Maurice, just amazing, like talented performers. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. and that's evident in uh, in the, the audio and video that follows, but also like for just sure. just swell dudes. Oh, yeah. Just nice people. And you know, I think I'm going to, uh, for the rest of the episode, because we're going to come back after the uh, yes. the, uh, the panel, uh, just in case any voice agents are listening, they sure right. will. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just kind of mix up some <laughs> different voices sure. here and there. Yeah. We already got one, Abacus's mom. Yeah, yeah. Right. Abacus, get down! <laughs> right, that's Perfect. a good yeah. one. Abacus and I'll just kind of mix it up a little bit. Oh, Abacus killed one of the migrant workers again. <laughs> right, you know, a lot of that stuff. They do, they when they say it, they don't include workers. It's just migrants. migrants yeah. Yeah. Abacus killed one of the migrants again. Yeah, it's very so, sad. Rob Paulson is like one of the biggest voice actors of this current generation, I'd say, starting he's you know fat. a long time ago. So. No, yeah. no yeah. fat. Very oh, not, oh, like yeah, no, not not that kind of reputation. Okay. Not, right. Yeah. right, prolific. I wonder what a big fat voice actor would sound like. Mm. Abacus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh no, it's him ordering and he goes, I have the halibut. <laughs> it's his real voice. <laughs> this is my real voice. When I go to work, I sound like this. Right? Like, yeah, anyway. I refuse to talk about. Uh, oh, by the way, I like that we could probably all do that voice pretty well. Uh, yeah. Not all of us. I don't do voices. So if we wanted to do. By the end of this. If we wanted to do a whole Andy Kaufman thing, mm. where we're like, yeah, you got to talk to our manager, Gilbert. Yeah. You know, Gilbert's voice would be Gilbert like, Gilbert Godfrey. Hey. Well, it would be this just Gilbert. And we could all pretend at different times to be the manager. Yeah. Would you like that? I like uh, yeah, that. I, I, Can you I, do that voice? I'm Gilbert with a cold. No, I'm not going to do that. I like it, though, because sometimes Gilbert's nice. People talk about him. It's like, man, Gilbert, Gilbert he's hot he's or cold. Yeah. Sometimes you talk to him, he's professional. <laughs> Other times you talk to him, he's incredibly unprofessional. Yeah. <laughs> sexual. Sexual. Yeah. And that voice saying sexual things. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> right? Like, Ooh, where did you touch me this time? I don't know. Uh, now I don't like <laughs> it at all. The person's like, I'm... Absolutely throbbing. <laughs> Yours is British. Mine is just regular. Abacus. <laughs> so go upstairs. Your mother and I are making love. <laughs> yes. You That's wonder why Abacus acts out. <laughs> yeah. It's because he can hear him yes. having sex. <laughs> yes. It's yes. because you heard him once. Oh, yes. I'm the mom. I'm the mom. Oh. <laughs> I'm close. <laughs> Not me. Yeah, I'm just I, letting. I said a different voice, but I said not me. <laughs> Let me tell you now. I might finish. <laughs> so, <laughs> where would you like to receive me? I just want to say that Pinky and the Brain is like a kids' show. 
<laughs> there are jokes that adults get to. I will say this. Simply answer this. Where would you like to receive me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love where would you like to receive me? You're coming up with gems today. Thank you so much. You had the uh, the white soup premises about white <laughs> soups. I, I think that was pre-turning the we things We didn't turn on. the mics on. We yeah. got to talk Brad about that. Said, Brad said white supremacist, yeah. and he hit the U. I was talking about what I look for in an online date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're like, well, I'm basically the spokesman. <laughs> I'm translucent. We gotta get to the we gotta yeah. get to the panel. Then we'll yeah, get so to I, white supremacy. Okay, yeah. yeah. So stay tuned <laughs> for white supremacists. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of our new characters. Oh, so the bar is so low. <laughs> so Rob Paulson, one of the most prolific voice actors of our generation, and his name is Robert Paulson. His yes. name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. But number two on the prolific voice actor list, Maurice Lamarche. D- there. And here's the thing is like you get Pinky in the Brain, super funny show, obviously one of those shows along with Animaniacs, Tiny Toons. Yeah. That's kind of like very well written. But when they came out, and I was just in the audience for this panel, their first 10 seconds on stage were fucking hilarious. Yeah. Like it was, did it shock you? Yeah. Okay, it's great. So we're going to throw to that panel. We had a lot of fun. Brad killed it. Mm. Um, this is uh, Brad's panel with the voices of Pinky in the Brain from Rhode Island Comic Con. Hi, everybody. How you guys doing? I'm here to announce your moderator for this panel. Uh, this next guy is uh, a wonderful friend of mine. How you doing? <laughs> uh, this is Brad Rohr from the Fun Bearable Podcast. Give it up. Rhode Island, there are a lot of people here. I was, I am, I am delighted. Rhode Island Comic Con, give it up for yourselves. We're going to bring our, uh, our, our actors out, and uh, I'll ask a few questions to get the pump primed, and then we'll turn it over to y'all. So start thinking about what questions you want to ask. Are you ready? <laughs> Without further ado, uh, I'm very excited to bring these gentlemen out. They are Mega talented actors, mega talented voice actors, and more importantly, just genuinely good people. Please put those paws together for Maurice LaMarche and Rob Paulson. Quiet, Pinky, or I shall have to hurt you. Hi, you guys. Well, thank you for having us, Brad. Hello, nurse. Yeah. A lot of nurses out there. Is there an actual nurse in the house? Anybody? Just in case. Oh, yes. Yes. So there you were. Hello, nurses. There you go. Always like to speak the truth from the the podium. How are y'all enjoying your oh, Rhode man. Island Comic Con experience? It's awesome. <laughs> we are we're having a great time. Everybody, I mean, everybody's so everybody sweet. Everybody is so kind, so sweet. Um, I, 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 this is my first. I think it's both of our. Yep, first, first time here in Rhode here. Island. And first time on on Rhode Island. Or, do you say on Rhode Island or in Rhode Island? I say in, in Rhode Island. It's not wow. actually an island. Though. You don't have any passion about that, do you? <laughs> It's in. It's an island that you're in. Yeah. Not on. Not on. Damn it. <laughs> no, I, I, always, I always wonder, are you in, why are you in a TV or on a TV show but in a movie? So those are my big... Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Well she gets it. Everybody's a critic. Yep. Um, well, well, well. Especially John Lovitz. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I had no idea that it was 100,000 people. This... This is enormous, um, yep. uh, but everybody, all you nice people out there from Rhode Island, all you down easters from up yonder. Uh, <laughs> we've, uh, I've, uh, one of my dear friends is from North Kingstown, Rhode Island. So, yeah, uh, re- real pleasure to be here. That's yes. great. Um, I'm going to dive into my prepared questions before we turn to the audience. Fire away. Both of you, each of you. Uh, has done so many voices. Which voices come the most naturally to you? Oh, gosh. Uh, 
I, I've had a couple of characters which pretty much sound like me. Um, Raphael from uh, the original. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but, you know, the idea is, of course, it, it, it's, it's all about acting. And if I'm good at my job, then whether or not I have a character that also sounds like me, right. if I do my job properly and I, and I uh, create a soul and, and, and a, a backstory and an actual character, then like any other actor, not comparing myself, but we all love Jack Nicholson because he's Jack. Yeah. But whether he's the Joker or the Postman Always Rings Twice or Easy Rider, he sounds like Jack. Right. But he uh, embodies uh, the, the appropriate character. So, yeah, um, Raphael and even Donatello from a later iteration of right. Turtles. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so those are the ones that come easiest, but... Um, Often the question is asked by Mo and me, is it hard? Well, it's not hard no. because nobody ever shoves a gun in your mouth to be an actor. No. You know, this is, we chose this. Yeah. It's, it's pure creative joy. Sometimes it presents challenges right. depending upon your vocal range, your actual physical construction of your voice box. Mo is one of those people, though, that has transcended all of that with his impressions, sound effects, <laughs> No, truly. He really has. You guys have a look uh, at, at Maurice LaMarche when he was doing his stand-up act. There are clips on YouTube. Pr yeah. Re ridiculously. Really gifted. skinny a million clips. million years ago. <laughs> Thin, handsome clips. Yes. Yes. No, but you can do it friends. all. He can do sound effects. He was Wacko's Burps in Animania. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of... A <laughs> How does your dad make a living? I, I was also Wacko's farts in the <laughs> yes, they, they cut that bit out. I don't know why. Yeah. Which, you, but you've done characters what? that have actually beat up your voice. Oh no, that that one that one the, the, the burp effect is uh it's it's involves like literally trilling my vocal cords like a Tuvan monk singer and then adding a uh, kind of thing to it with Ella Billy West's Georgie Jessel impression that he yeah. uses for Zoidberg. It's kind of a tongue inside out. What about Zoidberg? You know, <laughs> and, and, oh, ladies and gentlemen, and then add to <laughs> and it becomes the, the, the wacko belch or the elf burp from the movie Elf. That was me. 15, 15 seconds of that. But I can, I can feel it. I mean, there's an actual burning sensation in my throat when I do it. Because your vocal cords basically are like, they're, they're like two, two, uh, two membranes. They're, they're flaps. But if you do that enough, they become like sausages. Yeah. And then, this is why people, when you, if you got laryngitis, don't talk and don't whisper. Carry around a little uh, whiteboard, erasable whiteboard. Because every time you talk, you set yourself back to 100 on the swollen blood sausages in your throat. So this is my advice to anybody who comes to me with laryngitis, is shut the hell up. <laughs> Four days of shut the hell up and your laryngitis will go away. So anyway, that's, so, that's just, uh, yeah, it's manipulating uh, sinuses, it's all of that stuff. But what comes easiest is, uh, is probably, uh, you know, not me. Uh, yeah. you know, I was, to, to, like nobody ever asks for me to talk like this. You know, even if even if I'm doing kind of a, you That's know, true. And, yeah. uh, what they call an organic read of something like I was the voice of Lexus from 2009 to 2016. But I put a little something on. I put a little spin, a little the so, 2016 yeah. Lexus GS. Once driven, there's no going back. See your yeah. Lexus dealer. Yeah. Right. So then local tags. See your Rhode Island Lexus dealer. Yeah. Cha ching hundred bucks. He doesn't bucks. use that voice. See your Southern California Lexus dealer. Cha ching hundred bucks. See your Northern California Lexus dealer. Cha ching hundred bucks. And you just go through the country and you walk out a millionaire. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's great. But, but both you, of you. Pardon me. Also. He was Yosemite Sam for quite a while. Oh, I liked him. Yeah. But my vocal cords didn't. Yeah. yeah. It's tough. That's tough. And I, Mo is because he is so gifted in his impressions and creating stuff. He, that's I'm right here, Rob. Don't talk about me like I'm not in the room. <laughs> How many characters did you do on Futurama? 
I don't know, somebody with a lot of time uh, right around the end of the first run, the OG run, uh, when the internet was still young, uh, he they, they, they counted all the characters. I had at that point seventy two characters yeah. that were either Isn't that crazy re- repetitions, including one off characters. Right, and then and then, but I didn't have the most. Tress, Tress, yeah, Tress, Tress McNeil, McNeil had seventy four ah. characters. So yeah, I'm not the most prolific, but that you know that amateur Billy West, ah. he only had fifty three. <laughs> what a Jim. Go take a workshop, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, both of you have been uh, in the industry for quite a while. How has it changed from, uh, uh, from, oh my from God, your so, nascent days? So much. Yeah. I mean, you're not leaving your house for an audition now. I oh, mean, I hate right. that. walk into the closet, lay it down, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and then wait. I actually liked the days when we would go in and, uh, yeah. you, know, um, uh, you know, get direction Yes. Um, th- that, that type of thing. And I liked going to a recording studio. I mean, COVID has altered that for, right. I don't know how much longer, but I'm getting damn sick and tired of it. I, I mean, when we, when we are, when we do, we, we, when we did the original series and the, and the two comebacks of Futurama, we were always in a nice semicircle. The entire cast was there. We bounced off of each other when, when there were, when there were cuts, you know, we goofed around, we oh. built an entire show that we take around to uh, comedy festivals called outtake a based on Billy and John DiMaggio and me and our ability, our propensity for doing uh, outtakes. Fantastic. Um, uh, which are, you know, the Orson Welles outtake, which is where brain came from the famous, uh, you know, frozen peas, yeah. uh, William Shatner outtakes, all that. There's a, sh- I mean, we did, did a whole show. David X Cohen is our host and a, a lovely young actress named Jessica Marshall Gardner is our wheel girl. She spins the wheel and it's improv. You know, we've got to do the outtake that's on the wheel, uh, even though it's not improv because we actually know these voices really well. <laughs> um, but it's, it's uh, you know, that has gone away because yeah. we can't shtick yeah. in between. And the shticking in between is, you know, somewhat about our, about our egos and our ADD and all of that. And then there's another part of it about keeping the comedy energy going. Yes. You know, you don't want to just, you know, be funny and then sit here on, on Zoom. Yeah. For two minutes <laughs> until they called. Again, it's like, you just, whoo, yeah. it goes, whoo, goes down. You, you want to keep it going. So uh, for me, uh, you know, it's, it's been a little bit different, uh, right. just a lot different actually. Uh, this pandemic and its effects. Uh, also, the proliferation uh, of of non union work. I mean, yeah. sites like Voices One Two Three and Voices dot net. Um, you, know, you know, I just said their names, and I'm sure that <laughs> that, that wasn't helpful. But anyway, they, they, they you know what? A lot of people who want to get started in voiceover, get, you know, get started doing doing you know this the auditions that are called for there and they send them in and they get paid $10 a page. That's not voiceover work as far as I'm concerned, but I mean, it's a good way to get started, but you know, as soon as you can join the union, become SAG AFTRA and get residuals for your work, you know? Um, so that also has changed the business model. Yeah. I I totally agree. Are you going to jump in any (laughs) time? Stop me. Stop me. I'm running off at the mouth. Well, you're supposed to be the genius. (laughs) Um, I might be the, I, Brain may be the be. genius, but in our dynamic, I'm the one that's insane, so. Yeah. I 100% agree with my dear friend, Mo. I, um, I'm been an actor for a long time, and right. I, when you go into an audition in a traditional sense, I'm sure we have actors here, you have the people in front of you who have the, the power to do this, you know, and right. you can read the room. If, if I improv a line or I tweak it and I see somebody on the other side of the glass going, <laughs> then I... I got them. Yeah, it feels good. So you, you can't do that online. Right. Um, but it is the way it is. And boy, talk about necessity being the mother of invention. We were able to work on Pinky and the Brain and Animaniacs uh, reboot stuff right. from home. But we already had the gig. Yes. To continue to get more work is very difficult with that, that new trend. But c'est la vie. That's the way it is. I, I have to tell you <clears throat> that the upshot of all this wonderful work that Mo and I have been so incredibly fortunate to do uh, is that we're both old enough to have a legacy of characters that many people find enjoyable and, yeah. and, and make them happy, but we're young enough to travel around and do these events. And folks, 
I am serious as a freaking heart attack. The way you all embrace us, you are so kind. You tell us the most profoundly powerful stories about how uh, Animaniacs got you through this, or Futurama, you know, you were in a really acrimonious divorce and the only thing that kept you sane. We are learning that our work is about way more than our paycheck. Yes. And that is an enormous gift to us. Were we not able to have these events, we never would have known that. So we, owe all, we all owe you an enormous uh, gratitude. <laughs> With that in mind, if, uh, if folks out there have questions, if you want to step up to the microphone. Oh, oh okay. yeah, we got some questions already. You got a Ghostbuster, Mo. That's good. Now, you, what is it you collect, uh, Mr. Spengler? Spores, molds, and fungus. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I see we have a Venkman. Question, All right, question. I'll deal with that. Hello, masked nurse. <laughs> what do you got? What's your name? Uh, what's your question? Um, my name is Jade. Uh, my question is, have you ever gotten a script and opened it and like read it and been like, they want me to say what? Oh, what sure. Yep. Like Perfect example. My first lines on Rick and Morty were, where are my testicles, Summer? It's <laughs> a valid question. And the first thing I said to Justin Roiland was, man, now you're talking. <laughs> this is great. Mo and I have both had the great good fortune of working on that show. <clears throat> and by the way, if you do see them, please yeah. let me know. <laughs> the standard... I will. The I, think standard I, think I think your wife has them in the refrigerator. Say, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Got any sauce? Yeah, no kidding. Perfect. Hi. Hi how what's, what's, are you? My name is You're Los a Dexter's oh, Lab fan. I am. Cool. I am. What a shirt that is. Thank you. Uh, my question is, having worked for so many different uh, stations or channels, uh, WB, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, which one was your favorite? Or was there a difference? The one that had the best snacks. There you go. <laughs> Perfect answer. Perfect answer. Uh, listen, um... People often ask the same sort of question in a different context. Is there anything that you didn't like working on? Somebody pays me every single time I work. And so far, the check has never not cleared. So I'm grateful for all the work. Um, with respect to different companies, or, or, or I don't have a preference. I've had more good fortune, particularly with Warner Brothers um, and uh, Nickelodeon. That both of them, Disney to a large extent too, a lot of work for Disney, but the stuff that people seem to recognize me for are Warner Brothers and Disney. Um, but Mo, you, you do God Fox and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've had, I've had the tremendous good fortune to end up on some, some good Fox primetime stuff like The Critic, mm -hmm. Futurama. I get to guest on Simpsons? The Simpsons about once a year, once or twice a year. I've done 26 Simpsons. I usually as Orson Welles. Um, and, um, uh, you know, and uh, there's a new show called Crepopolis coming from the mind of Dan Harmon yeah. uh, next year. And it's about the beginning of civilization. And uh, I've got, I, I table read every episode, um, but I, I'm, I'm only, I only was in three. I mean, he's using really top people just for the table reads. I mean, Eric Bowes is on the table reads. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt Gurley's on the table reads. <laughs> But, you know, then inevitably they put in a celebrity in the part. But I've managed to make the cut to three episodes, and I'm really looking forward to, uh, to seeing it. Amazing. Thank you, both Thank you my you friend. Thank you. How are you doing, sir? But when in doubt, uh, craft, craft services, am I right? Yeah, yeah. exactly right. You, you, get get it. It. you get it. Um, I, I know um, you've got a podcast. Is it still going? I Thank you very much. What's I knew for, for a while that, you know, it seemed like your voice wouldn't, you know, come back. And I think we were all a bit worried that oh, we'd, never, bless your heart. we'd never get to hear you sing about the countries again. So. Oh, yes. Well... Thank you for asking. What is your name, sir? Matt. Matt, thank yeah. you very, very kindly. Yeah. Is your, uh, is your podcast still going? It, it is not in a, uh, in a proper way. It, uh, to the extent, Matt is very kindly uh, asking about a podcast uh, I did on which Maurice has been a guest half a dozen times called uh, Talking Tunes. Um, with, oh, thank you. Yeah, people know. <clears throat> However, um, Due to this wonderful technology, all the audio versions, which started in 2011, are on Spotify. Um, 
Uh, and we did a, a live action version with a four camera, beautiful set for Nerdist for two years. We did about 80 of those. Um, and those are all available on something called Pluto TV. So if you download the Pluto app and you search for Talking Tunes with Rob Paulson, you'll see it. Um, and I really appreciate you asking. I would like to do it again, but the fact is, Matt, that I was so fortunate to get a shot to do it at, for me, a high level with a proper set, four cameras, great editing, all of that, that I don't want to do it again unless it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, I'm, I've spoiled my audience and myself. Um, but frankly, there's so much good information. It's totally free to the extent any of you are interested in voice acting or acting in general. Please listen and or watch. There's so much information from Maurice, uh, Nancy Cartwright, Mark Hamill, Kevin Conroy, Eric Bowser, Casey, you know, I mean... Um, um, Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. Yes. <laughs> Just um, don't come, up, come out of an up-tempo number into a dead dog dedication. That's my advice. See? All you got to do is poke him with a stick and off he goes. No, who Clancy, Brown. Clancy Brown. I was Clancy Brown. Anyway, thank you for asking and please listen and watch. It's great fun. With Kevin Conroy? Yeah, the one that you were Oh, man. Thank, I'm glad. Yeah. What? By the way, I still absolutely Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Well, that that mask theme, I was I got to be the the mask in the cartoon version a million years ago in which I was Jim Carrey for a lot less money. Um, but the best part of that show is I got to sing the theme song. It's a killer theme song. Um, but you were referencing just I got to say this. This is this is why my little podcast was important. We did an episode with uh, Kevin Conroy, West the Batman, Batman yeah. as far as I'm concerned, and Alan Burnett and Paul Dini, the producer, writer, you know. Um, and we did the, uh, the ending of The Dark Knight. Uh, so I was playing uh, the Gary Oldman part, and Kevin was Batman. And what was so beautiful about that, Matt, was that Kevin's talent is so prodigious and so powerful. Um, the camera was on the two of us doing the read, and as the camera pulled back and we ended the scene, Paul Dini, who'd written, I don't know, 100 episodes? Easily. More? Yeah. He's doing this. It was so powerful because Kevin is such an incredible actor. Yeah. So when you, when you think about it, Kevin has played Batman more than any anybody other else. actor in history. Yeah. More, he's logged more hours as Batman than any of the cinematic Batman, and God rest his soul, even Adam West. Adam West. Yeah. I mean, he is, he is Batman. But you really get a chance to see, literally, with the video version, uh, the Nerdist version, how truly gifted these actors are, and it reminds you again, it's about acting. It's about, it's acting exactly. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Good question. All right. Oh, no, it's ad time. Uh, this week, we have a sponsor for the podcast uh, that we want to tell you about. And Brad has some information. And then Chuck has information. And then I have information. But genuinely, uh, human connection here, I want to say that uh, this is an exciting thing. And uh, we're pumped for it. Yes. And uh, it, it involves you as well. So, Brad... Tell us about this week's sponsor. Okay. Support for Fun Bearable is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off. And free worldwide shipping with the code FUNBEAR, all caps, one word, at manscaped.com. Seven million men. If my math is correct, 14 million balls. That's, That's right. Yeah, yeah, give or take. Oh, 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 hold on. Minus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you lose a couple here and there. And uh, if you're confused about the code FUNBEAR, just look back to the Instagram post that uh, Brad had when he got that nasty infection from that back tattoo. Because uh, it's all caps FUNBEAR on yeah. the back of him. Yep. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, full disclosure. I told him just go emojis. Yeah, you get the party but, horn and then the bear. Look, That's Ma- a fun Mans- bear. Manscaped did send us uh, this this performance package uh, that included a personal groomer, yeah, yeah. a beard trimmer, yeah. a nose and ear hair trimmer, some very comfy boxer briefs, as well as a, a little spritz bottle of ball toner and a different spritz bottle of ball deodorant. Uh, you guys could use the ball deodorant for sure. <laughs> he actually <laughs> asked me if he could have my ball deodorant. <laughs> And your ball I, 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 you can but, have my ball deodorant. Before I gave yeah. you guys your performance packages, I yeah. dumped out your ball deodorant into a spray bottle for myself. And <laughs> yours is just water at yeah, this yeah. point. It's a placebo. It's I a just, placebo. I desperately needed <laughs> ball deodorant. Yeah. yeah so by the way, I need the toner because it looks like a pagoda down there. <laughs> by the way, I went to your house. Another new couch? Yes. <laughs> the old one was <laughs> condemned. Yeah. It, uh, it, it, it eats through some it's weird. fabric. It's, yeah. Is Let's that true? talk about good manscaped I it stuff. Said, I thought it was haunted, you said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I will say this. Here's my personal experience with please, this, just for a moment. Please. You see this uh, visage right here? Beautiful. This doesn't look great, but it, does. it looked worse before. The, the hair looks great. Yeah. Oh, it's the facial hair looks great. Yeah, it's, it's all the rest. It's the face, it's just the, the palette. Yeah. Manscaped has nothing to do with the face. Right, exactly. Make sure they know that. The house sucks. The yard looks great. great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I used the uh, the beard trimmer because yeah. when we talked about this uh, this this little bit of a sponsorship right. deal, I remember saying to you, Brad, I was like, get the trimmer. I want the trimmer. Because yeah, I was very, thinking about replacing my beard trimmer, right? It, yeah. yeah. I got to say... I love the beer trimmer, and I'm not saying yes. it just because it's a sponsorship. I know. I do really like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I I think the uh, the downstairs trimmer. I used it. I, well, listen, I'm going to say this. I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but just holding that thing in my hand, like when I first got it and took it out of the box and I'm looking at that thing, it's pretty freaking great. Like yeah. if I was in the market for said trimmer, that's the one I would pick. And I'm not saying it because it's a sponsorship deal. That's true. It even has a light. It does have yes. a light. Oh, yeah. it has a light. So I used the personal trimmer. Good. Yeah. On and my you said the light's person. not bright enough. I said <laughs> I said no light could be bright enough. Yes. Um, you had a mag light taped to it? <laughs> yeah. Actually, speaking of haunted. <laughs> <laughs> you have one of those X Files. Big flashlights, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It cuts through the fog. But I did use the personal trimmer. Okay. Yeah. And here's how, because I want to make keep this PG, you know? Thank you. Sure. So, like, you ever see, like, when you go to the zoo, you see, like, those old lions that are, like, crusty and scraggly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. all like, oh, God, this, yeah. this lion needs to be put matted, out of his misery. Matted fur. Yeah. All he really needs is a good trim to become mm. a smooth, smooth tiger. That's not how lions and tigers work. <laughs> I think it might be. I was supposed I to follow with talking about the nose and ear hair trimmer. I thought it worked well. It didn't. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it it uh, like a, a previous iteration of a nose and ear hair trimmer, not through Manscaped, would like catch on hairs in my nose. It hurts. Yeah. Not so with this one. Nice and smooth and easy. Yeah. It's like a tiger inside my nose. And you know what? You can uh, when you yeah, get this. this I mean, I'm not gonna. Yeah. yeah, not this tiger. <laughs> no, but, uh, the tiger can stay out of my nose. Here's a fun, a bit of a fun fact for you. Uh, th- by the way, this this ad break is turning into an episode. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, when you get the package, if you order the performance package, uh, and you get the nose hair trimmer and you get the other things, you pull them out, uh, you flick them on, and they have battery. Like they yes, have juice. Yes, I noticed so that. So I I got the thing home, and Finn, my son, was like, "Oh, is that the thing from Manscaped?" And I pulled out the ear tr- uh, ear and nose hair trimmer, yeah. and I me- immediately just went yeah. right into my ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it worked, and it got rid of some hairs. I was no, very happy. Cool. It's it's great. It's cool because like it's one of those products where you never end up going to the store and grabbing stuff that's actually premium. In this department, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and this is cool because you say you, you know what? you buy some cheap ten dollar wall thing or exactly, whatever, and, exactly. Yeah. And this is like a thing where you feel like, oh it's man, good. I feel comfortable and confident. And I like Seriously. the idea. I know of it sounds like it. a pitch, but I'm serious. No, but I like the idea of getting it as a package deal and having that thing. And fullest of disclosures, smooth, I would like to, tiger. I, let me let me smooth this tiger a little more and be honest about what we're doing. Manscaped, uh, uh, you know, reached out to us. Yes, which is great. We did not nice. ask them for anything. They reached out to us, uh, offered a sponsorship deal, um, and right now we're kind of in a uh, temporary sponsorship kind of yes. thing. Yeah, we're in sponsorship um, limbo. I, well, I was going to say more of a, a probation. Yes, but, yes, yeah, probationary period. Yeah. So if we 
um, have eight, eight people, people. If we yes. can move, yeah. If, if we have eight people use the Fun Bear code, yes, yeah, on the Manscaped website and order their package, yes, then they're going to continue out and extend their sponsorship deal with us, which does help us uh, truly it does. a lot this, yeah. like we're not at a level where we can be like what's the sponsor whatever who gives a shit right. that's a weird way to say buy a pillow you yeah. know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. we can't do that yeah. Yeah. we have to be like thank you <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you so much yes, yes it is a nice pillow yes, right yes uh and in this case it is a a, a great thing i like what this package was and it was cool Ooh. So, I got a great. Ba- ba- I'm. J- I'm basically what I'm saying is like if you are thinking about getting a, a trimmer for your face, for your downstairs face, for your ears or nose face, get this yeah. and use the code FunBear when you do because you will genuinely be helping us if we can hit eight. We're. Uh, it's all gravy, we're baby. Get, we're gonna get a long term sponsor. We're gonna trim that gravy. And I think if you're someone who not only is looking for you know trimming needs. But also, like, is like, oh, I'd love to support Fun Bearable and get them to the place where we have yeah. t shirts and different things like that. This is how you do it for now. Yeah. Every, you know, we put out the show for free every week, obviously. Yeah. And if you want to support us, this is a great way to do it. And, a- and I, the, I was vetoed out of this, but my idea was we save the clippings as kind of a fun raffle. Yeah. <laughs> Whose hair are you going to get? Uh, not a fun <laughs> raffle. It's more Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. In my case, <laughs> well, all right. Can I can I give you? I have an idea for Manscaped for a new uh, phrase. Order our package to keep your package in order. Pretty good. <laughs> oh, God. I, I have a call it's to fine. I have a call to action that I'm required to read. Please, that, that, please read what it. What do you say? What do you grade me? I'm gonna call our uh, listener viewers to action. Get twenty percent off and free shipping with the code FunBear at Manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off with free shipping at Manscaped.com and use code FunBear. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped thank you so much to manscaped for uh supporting fun bearable thank you so much yeah. for the fun bears for supporting manscaped yeah yeah and uh thank you uh, manscaped and fun bearable for a 20 percent off code because whenever you know you know look we all hear podcast sponsor ads that yeah. are much shorter than this one but yeah. it's always like 10 percent off 10 yeah. percent off 20 yep. percent i'm actually stopping i'm going oh okay you know what yeah, i mean yeah i know yeah, yeah i agree let's Great. you know what let's bump it up 21 yeah, you All right, know what? We, we don't we don't have the power to do that. Okay, this right. Is set. I want to talk to Mr. Scape. Instead of that extra one percent, Manscape can have my mm. catchphrase for free. And I promise to drop my lawsuit when because I'm suing them, do uh, you? and because I'm suing them because they stole my idea. I originally had Womanscaped, and <laughs> it was. <laughs> do you want to give me a grade on my 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 thing though? My... A plus. Wow. All right. I just want to get out of that the ad. That was a go away A+. Plus. <laughs> yeah, I, I, want to get, I want to go out of the ad back to the episode. I don't like a go away A+. Plus. I want a Let's go one. back to the episode. But when we do, listener, viewer, I want you to know we're all smooth down there. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, that's like, that's like a weird version of Pennywise. Yeah. We're all smooth down here. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, Manscaped. I tried to get us out of the ad. <laughs> Look what you've done. <laughs> Hello, hello, nurse. Hi, gentlemen. Good to see you. Good Pleasure. You. So, uh, you know, when I was watching Animaniacs as a younger man, there were a lot of jokes I did not <laughs> that kind of went over my head. Yeah. No originally. kidding. No kidding. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, is there was there a particular <laughs> was there a particular uh, joke that you remember that? you don't think kids would get back then, but then when they look at it now, they're like, oh boy. <laughs> Do we have to? Yeah. Go for it. All right, the one that sticks out, yeah. fingerprints. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I remember sitting next to Tress McNeil saying, there's no way we're gonna get this through. <laughs> and they did, uh, and it's, it's a remarkably clever yeah. piece that goes, this fast, and like all, in my view, good comedy, it doesn't wait for you to catch up. Yeah. It goes boom, 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 boom. Faulty Towers is the same way. Boom, boom, boom. Just goes. Um, and yeah, that's a pretty remarkable show. And Brain has had a couple that we've done too. Um, well, that we had the, uh, I was thinking of the Christmas special. Oh. When you ask. It's our favorite episode is yeah, the Christmas special. Yeah. When you ask about the uh, party of daughter. What's that? Oh, yeah. Hey, God, Brian, what is it about we're going to have a party at the Donner House? (laughs) (laughs) 
somehow, Pinky, the idea of joining the Donner Party does not fill me with holiday cheer. Yeah. <laughs> and what was the one that we... Know? People don't know. I mean, the, the as Donner a kid, party. you don't know about the cannibalism, the survival yeah. cannibalism yeah. of this, this party that was headed by Donner. And, you know, and But also, the one we did, uh, did an episode called Bubba Boba Brain, where oh, yes. Brain puts on the stilts. I know it, I know it. Genius. I'd say puberty was undoubtedly kind to you. Yes! <laughs> yes. That's great. Yeah. That's what, yeah, the if Dolly I may, Parton. Inordinately. Inordinately. Yeah. Yeah, thank, good job. Yeah. yeah, Dolly Parton comes up and says, What did she say? I like you. She says, uh, I'm a big fan. I'm, I, 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 I really, I don't know. I really, I like, really like you. What do you think about that? Yeah. <laughs> I, what, I, I, would, I think that pu- puberty was inordinately, inordinately kind to you. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. It was 25 years ago or more. Thanks um, very much, pal. Yes, but also, you know, uh, we couldn't get away with that now. Yeah. yeah. That, that joke is cancelable now. Sorry. So, just, just, just real quick. Wacko, can you conjugate? Well, I would ask Wacko, but he's not here. I'm Yakko. No. <laughs> but you mean, I, can I conjugate? I've never even kissed a girl. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Wow, we look at ghost, this. The Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters meet. meet. Greetings. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a working trap. He's doing great. You need to get that to a containment unit as fast as possible. Oh, yeah, yeah, take a breath. This could be extraordinarily dangerous otherwise. So I'm, I'm Brian. And hey, Brian. first of all, sorry, I forgot that I had the Vankman knife. Meant to oh, no problem. <laughs> Quite all right. But going with the Spangler voice, when I, as I did some research, they told you when you did, your, when you did the characters for the show, don't do an impersonation of the actor. Well, they came out and told the entire waiting room. Yeah. I've, I believe there were probably about 30 actors in this tiny waiting room at Wally Burr's. Remember Wally Burr's place? I do. And uh, the original place, it was that garage. It's now a garage. Yeah, on, on Hollywood on, Way. On Hollywood Way. Yeah. And Arsenio Hall was there and Ernie Hudson was yeah. there. And they were the only two African-American actors there. So they were the, the only two choices for Winston Zeddemore. But uh, they, they came out, Michael C. Gross came out and said... Um, Guys, I know you've all seen the movie. Uh, don't, 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 we aren't interested in impressions. If we wanted sound alikes, we just have, you know, Danny and Harold and, and Bill uh, do the part. You know, and, and of course, Ernie. Ernie's standing right there. And <laughs> that's heartbreaking. Anyway, um, and so I, and I remember looking over at Arsenio, and Arsenio and I, we knew each other from the comedy store, and he just went, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and I, so I was like, I got in the booth, I looked at the model sheet of Egon, they didn't, they, it wasn't colorized yet, so I assumed they were gonna color the hair in black, just like Harold, and I just, hey, do I try a Poindexter voice? I, yeah. And then I said, okay, ready, you ready to, what, what's, your, what's your idea? And I just, I had no other idea, so I just went, this could be extraordinarily dangerous, Peter. That's a Force 5 free-roaming ectoplasmic entity. And I read the thing, and then I just hung my head. <laughs> and shame. And left, left the little booth, walking down the hall. And as I, as I came out, Michael came up to me and said, okay, you get to do an impression. How about that? And, and I was like... <laughs> and I was like, well, thanks. Um, thank you. And I, was, I walked away going, did, that, did he just give me the job? Yeah. And <laughs> next day my phone rang and I was Egon. So, yeah. you know, that was, that, was, that was how that went down. Yeah. Thank you very much. 160 Pleasure. plus episodes. Yeah, man. Great. Yeah. Also, not counting, not counting, not counting extreme Ghostbusters. So, uh, yeah. Real quick, what did you think of the Q5 changes in the later seasons? The which? When they brought in the Q5 people to change the show up where they replaced... Um, yeah, they replaced Lorenzo Music. They replaced um, Arsenio with. Um, well, Arsenio, Arsenio left because he got a national talk show in prime time. Yeah. So I mean, he he tried for just a little while to juggle both, and he just his schedule just wouldn't allow for it. Uh, the Lorenzo Dave switch, I love them both. I don't have a preference as to either of their Venkmans or Venksmen. Um, but uh, that was strictly based on, unfortunately, an offhand remark, a totally innocent remark that Bill Murray made at a party uh, to Joe Medjick, and he just said, uh, 
you know, how come, how come Harold's guy sounds like him and my guy doesn't sound like me? And they just fell all over themselves mm. to get a, get an impressionist in there. And Dave does a great Bill Murray and I don't, you know, be, I've loved Dave. He's become a dear friend over the years, but Herman? that's Is it Dave Herman. Coulier. Oh, Coulier did Coulier. it. Right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, uh, um, it was unfortunate. I know Lorenzo was hurt, you know, uh, but that, you know, he's also been in the business forever. So he, he gets recastings, you know, I mean, I, we all have to, everybody, we've all been recast in something. Oh yeah. You know, Frozen one versus frozen two, for example, you know, I just had to accept that they wanted a celebrity in the part the next time around. Um, but well, I reckon, I reckon Bill Murray's keeping his mouth shut now. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, the, the crowning injustice, not the injustice, but irony is that he, he ended up playing Garfield, mm -hmm. the character Lorenzo, <laughs> Talk about a voice that yeah. comes easily. That's his default yes. voice. Exactly how Lorenzo he talks like that. And so, in fact, Lorenzo had to amp up his energy to play Venkman. Yeah. You know, because all the action sequences. He was Garfield. Basically, Lorenzo is just this really mellow guy. Yeah. You know, he talks exactly like Exactly how he spoke. Best deadpan, you know, delivery in the business. And, uh, but, you know, Coulier did a, a yeoman's task. Yeah, and he's yeah. a really gifted guy. He's a great guy. guy. Yeah. Really great, down to earth, yeah. lovely man, Dave Coulier. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, pal. Thank Good you. Question. Thank you. Next question. So, <clears throat> Hi. What's your Hi. name? Oh, hang on. I just want to say I'm going to be short and brief as possible, and I hope you can be too. I've been a I can. huge. I can. You can be, but <laughs> okay. it's not possible. I've been a huge uh, uh, the real Ghostbusters fan from the the very beginning. I watched the cartoon show all the time, and I had a lot of the toys, and I I really liked the the, the other the voices of the characters you did from other shows that were so funny and the Maniacs, Pinky, and, and the Brain. <laughs> they really made me laugh. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And. Um, Okay, and uh, just a quick, two little quick questions. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, we're uh, okay. Where's the characters? So, okay, I know that in the one uh, transition from from the real Ghostbusters, Slimer and Ghostbusters. I mean, the voices for Peter and Janine were changed, and but I'm sure that uh, Winston, Egon, and Ray and Slimer were still the same people for the next seasons, right? Well, Winston, as I said, Arsenio went on to do his own talk show. <laughs> So a very talented actor named Buster Jones came in. Oh yeah. To uh, to 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 be Winston. So yeah, we did have a rec two recastings on that, and then um, you know years later for Extreme, Billy West became Slimer because Frank did not want to work at night, and that show recorded from six p.m. to ten p.m. at night because half of our cast were on sitcoms, and they were in studio, uh, you know, uh, rehearsing and then blocking, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So uh, Frank had no interest in doing that. So Billy became Slimer. So it's, it went through a few cast changes, but I was lucky to stay Egon the whole way through. Nice. And I stand on the shoulders of a giant. Yes. Um, you know, the fact that I did that Harold Ramis impression, I, I, Harold informs absolutely everything I ever did is Egon. I would, it's the old bumper sticker, what would Harold do? And uh, Violet, uh, uh, Violet Ramis, who wrote a wonderful book called Ghostbusters Daughter, actually inscribed the inside of my book, Thank you for keeping the spirit of Egon alive. That's sweet. So. Okay, just one, just one last Ghostbusters thing. Okay, remember the, the two episodes, like, knock, knock, he, and you said this line, if I told you the whole story, you wouldn't have done it. And then there was the poultry guys, and you were about to change back into the, 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 the chicken monster going, <laughs> You think you could do those uh, two lines for, for us? Uh, you just did, and you did them better than I could. Because right? <laughs> my... Work. Thank you, pal. My voice is shot after two days of talking thank to people. You. But Hi. thank you. Hi. Hi. What's um, your name? My name is Joe T. Hey, Hello, Joe. Joe. Uh, my dad's actually like here with my dad. Who Hello, Joe's dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he actually has the same name as me. Well, nice. No, no kidding. kidding. My dad did too. Wow, what a coincidence. How about that? Perfect. A anyway, my, my question is for, for you guys. Um, yes. Considering, you know, you know, the brain's uh, like the voice of the brain is basically like 65 percent Orson Welles and 35 percent Vincent Price. Um, how would you feel if, you know, like Warner Archives called and like had you do like a commentary together on one of Orson Welles movies in wow. character? 
That's a good Ooh. idea. God, I mean, I wouldn't feel qualified to be perfectly honest. I'm, I'd have to really steep myself in the film and, and, to, and to, <laughs> to carry it off as being authentically Orson Welles back from the grave. <laughs> You know, I never did like this shot in Citizen Kane. I <laughs> never quite felt we dug the hole deep enough to really get across the the, the true depth of the of the of the gravity of this the mise en scène. Mise en scène. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> the, the French long been celebrated for its excellence. Anyway, um, that'd be cool. I do. I try to rise to the occasion. I would listen to a Pinky in the Brain commentary on Citizen Kane. Oh, that'd be great yeah. character. Definitely gonna now there's that, there's the added dimension. There's the piece de resistance yeah. right there. I met a young lady in high heels on Santa Monica Boulevard named Rosebud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she seemed very lovely I bet and she asked did. for money. Yes. Uh, Rosebud frozen peas. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you, Joe. Th- Thanks, Thank Joe. you. I'll definitely be writing to Warner Archive on Atta Twitter boy. about that. Okay. Yeah. Thank Make you, Let's Joe. start a Joe. petition. Oh, my God. Another great show we were on. The hey, tech. Up we were bo- Maurice was the midnight bomber with bombs at midnight, right? No. Nice. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now why would I do it? <laughs> I'm just so... I'm if you just, do my voices for me... <laughs> That's how kind good Moe is lets now. the air out of it. That he hires us to do his voices for him and makes more money. Yeah. Yeah. A subcontracting. Yeah. 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 So my name's Alonzo, and Hi. I'm an alcohol. Oh, wrong yeah. man. Yeah. Wrong man. Wrong man. <laughs> so uh, welcome to Rhode Island. Thank you for coming. Pleasure. It's always a joy to meet voice actors. You guys Thank are always you. so friendly, outgoing, and just glad to meet us all. Thank you. Um, so my question was, uh, now, do either of you guys have a voice actor that you've never worked with that you would like to work with? Or in the case that you guys are so prolific, that's not the case. Is there someone, a voice actor that you want to work with again that you haven't worked with in oh, a while? Oh, God, yeah. Well, I, mean, per- I never got to work with Mel. You no, did. I did. I worked with Mel Blanc twice. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which was and a, I, now it's, you know. That was a remarkable experience. I, like, and I told him, uh, <clears throat> we were working on a uh, Jetsons project at Hattabar. <laughs> <laughs> Some Jane, his wife. I was playing Judy Jetson's uh, rock star boyfriend, and uh, I got a call from the late great mentor of both of us, uh, Gordon Hunt. Who, Helen Hunt's dad. Helen Hunt's father. Yeah. And um, he directed all the cartoons in those days over there. And he said, hey, Robbie, uh, Mel's going to be here today. You want to sit next to him? And I said, of course. And so I walked in, and I sat down and introduced myself. And uh, he was fairly close to the end of his life. He's probably in his late 70s. And um, I said, Mr. Blank, like anyone with a pulse, I'm a fan. If it's not too much trouble, would you? And, of course, he knew exactly what I wanted. He takes off his glasses, and he looks at me and says, eh, what's up, Doc? <laughs> and it really was... I had to order a seizure salad. I, <laughs> it was remarkable. Now, and Mo and I talk about this a lot, we, and it goes back to our absolutely heartfelt gratitude for you guys, is that we are now in the position not to compare ourselves with the great Mel Blanc. However, you saw what happened when Mo just did spores, molds, and fungus. It just lit up the room. So to be in a position where you've been paid to do something that engenders that sort of response is beyond cool. So, uh, yeah, I had that experience. But uh, as far as working with anybody else again, I don't know of any too many people on, that I wouldn't work with again. By and large, people who do this gig are very um, down-to-earth, absolutely devoid of pretense, because they realize it's, it's about the character. We don't draw them, and we don't write them. And we got nothing without a shit ton of people doing it, their work at a high level. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's not, ego is left outside the door. <clears throat> got anybody you don't want to work with besides me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have anyone I don't want to work with. I, I only have a list of people I can't believe I got mm-hmm. the privilege of working with, for instance. That's a um, better answer. Um, uh, oh, I like that T-shirt. <laughs> your, your, it's a Godfather-ish T-shirt, but... Oh, cool. The, 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 uh, the paw feather? 
Oh, oh the paw father. Nice. I like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was ADD there. Just a, oh, look, a fly. Um, Ooh, look at the kitty. Ernie, Ernie Borgnine uh, playing Brain's father. Roddy McDowell. Hollywood legend Roddy McDowell playing playing Brain's nemesis. I mean, he. I mean, the half dozen or so times we got to work with him, he was always a gentleman total and, pro. and total pro. He came to work and you know, he was always early. One time we we got there and they hadn't opened the studio yet, and Roddy was standing outside in a beautiful, you know, checkered jacket and an ascot, ascot tie, and you know, Old and he's just and he, never a sense of this being, you know. B-list kind of work or anything like that to him. An acting job was an acting job was an acting job. And uh, he put everything into playing Snowball and uh, a real inspiration. And, and then we didn't know at the time he was... He was uh, battling cancer, cancer. Yeah. yeah, and so never, never Remarkable let on. Remarkable experience. Never let anyone know. He was from a more stoic time. Yeah, and um, you know, there's a guy that used to have Elizabeth Taylor and <gasps> you know uh, Jane Fonda over to his house. Hang I mean, out. there's there's Roddy. If you YouTube Roddy McDowell home movies, and you'll just see Crazy. like the kind of people that just hang out at his Malibu, yeah. you know, place just you know to go play on the beach. You know, and uh, so, yeah, I've had nothing but good experiences. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for your question. And You're thanks welcome. for watching The Tick. Yeah. Spoon oh, yeah. indeed. It's even the comics. They're written here, right here in New England. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a great show. Yeah. yeah. Definitely still is. Yeah. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you again for coming. Our pleasure. We are, Hi. We are running low on time. So I just want to let people know that. Oh, Hi, okay. everybody. What's My name? name is Chris. I have a question for Carl Weezer. Perfect. Right. Yosemite <laughs> Sam. Uh -huh. I don't know what's wrong with your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know either. I think it's just inspiration. but uh, um, my, For me, it's perspiration. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it's frustration. Get to your question. <laughs> question is, <laughs> Go ahead. Fire away, what Carl. You, Carl. Yeah. What do you think of Rhode Island so far? Would you visit again? Did you have any funny interactions? And did you have any good food? Well, I had a really excellent croissant. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. And it would be, it's a lovely state, even though it's really tiny. But yeah. I would find it a little more enjoyable if Jimmy's mom were here. <laughs> But apart from that, it's really great, and I bought a new inhaler. <laughs> That's pretty fair. What about you, Yosemite? <laughs> I likes Rhode Island, <laughs> but I didn't get to have no Italian food, unfortunately. Uh, I was so exhausted that I just had room service, uh, except for la <laughs> last night we went to uh, Hen Hem Hemingway's for uh, seafood. That was yeah. pretty delicious, but I, I missed out on the Italian food, and that's it. Uh, that's actually such a serious subject for me that right. I stopped doing the voice and I'm talking to you in my sincere Maurice LaMarche voice. But I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I've got a five o'clock uh, flight, so I'm not going to get to stay. So I'm, I'm hope, hopefully they'll have me back in a couple of years and I'll yeah. get to try yeah. all your wonderful Italian restaurants. Good. You guys are great. You're both like idols and inspiration and I hope to see you guys again and hopefully uh, what voice is that you're doing no, <laughs> this is a uh, like dude come on you know I'm gonna go to Mark Chang instead excellent I'll see you when you go up and tame me totally bro. man thank you later you're good good job you're good all right Sadly, this, this will be our last question. I'm so sorry for those of you who, who, who can't get a question now. Please see uh, Hi, Maurice and Rob at their booths upstairs. Last question. No pressure. Hi. Wow, you sure you yeah. want to piss this guy off? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He's got a weapon that's taller than I am. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yes, hello. This is uh, Michael David, and I have Hi, two Michael. questions to ask. One for both of you, and the other one for Maurice. Okay, the first question. You both have been in a plethora of cartoons, some of them obscure and some of them very well known. Right. Out of all your roles, so specifically with Rob, you do... Um, Gladstone Gander in DuckTales, the original, and Maurice, you do uh, Dishonest John in the Beanie and Cecil reboot. Wow. Is there any <laughs> obscure character that you would like to reprise your role in someday? Yeah. Uh -uh. yeah. Go ahead. A obscure character. Um, I did a character actually on The Tick that I loved called Brainchild, and I had a blast with that character. Yeah. Just yeah. weird and out there, and uh, he had a, he had a glass, uh, like a plexiglass 
part of his head that showed his brain. It was really, he was just a smart ass little shitty kid. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was great fun. I, I probably have others, but I, Mo and I have absolutely had an embarrassment of riches. And when you're lucky enough to have so many characters and you don't remember them all, you're, I got no complaints. No. I mean, the same applies to Gladstone. I haven't heard that voice in a long time. Well, I, yeah, because I was on the original, and then yep. Jason Matsukis did it in the, um, the uh, reboot, and he did a great job. I directed him when he was on um, uh, Rise of the TMNT, and he's a really smart, funny guy, and he, they totally should have given him that job. He was great. Nice. All right, and the you, second Morris? question for Maurice. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's going to result in a groan from the audience, but could you give me a brief... Um, synopsis on your involvement as uh, Chancellor Naysay in Friendship is Magic? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, just, a, just a groan for me. No, I had a great experience with that uh, show with, with, um, with uh, My Little Pony. Uh, Nicole Dubuque, who was the showrunner, um, actually wrote that part with me in mind because she, uh, she just thought I could, I, could, I could bring something, some gravitas to this bigoted character who then has to, you know, learn a lesson and, and, and change. And um, so uh, I, I, I went up to Vancouver and recorded all my episodes uh, in one marathon recording session. I didn't get to interact with any of the other cast, unfortunately. But it was it was a wonderful wonderful thing to play a character who's got an arc and an arc of uh, of learning, you know. So uh, it would be great if we had that in actual real life, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that happens at least in the uh, world of bigotry. But thank you so much, and uh, thank you, thank, thank you. you very much. Bill. Good night, good night, everybody. Rob Paulson, Maurice LaMarche, thank you so much for doing this panel. I Pleasure. wish you just nothing but the best, professionally, personally, and otherwise. Rhode Island thank Comic Con so loves thank you. you. Thanks, Rob Paulson, thank Maurice you. LaMarche, folks. Oh. Thank you. That was it. Funny stuff. Uh, Funny great. guys. Yeah. Great guys. They were super yeah. nice backstage. Uh, and and uh, at other events that we saw them at over the course of Comic Con, so and great job uh, you. on your end as well. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. It, it felt good. Like I, I mean, and they made it easy. They've done cons. Mm. Um, yeah, but you know what? Your the job of the moderator is underrated. So don't don't sell yourself right. short. Right. Well, I, it is. Yeah. It is like we. I've seen some bad ones, and. Um, I think you killed it with them. I, and, hey, and to be fair, you did some bad ones. So I, let's be yeah. so <laughs> you know, Chuck and I have struggled uh, to to moderate uh, a, a con or. Uh, what do you think? Where do we? So so let's let's fill the audience in. Yeah a little yeah bit. yeah. Please. So uh, well, first of all, really, I really do think you did a great job, and Thank I you. think that the funnier the people are, I do think you have to like raise your own bar a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. To be there to to kind of be like not standing out as someone that's like not really fitting the panel. Right. So that's important. Um, and you did a killer job. Yeah. But we've been doing cons for a couple of years now, probably like five or six. So we've moderated a lot of different cons. Uh, Rhode Island Comic Con's a common one. But we did Comic Con with two N's at the end, which was in Connecticut. Yep. And <laughs> I know. <laughs> you hate I know. It. And there's so many options in your little bowl, and you had to pull that one out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, luck of the draw. We also, yeah. we, we did a Big Apple Con. Um, Where was that? And uh, Washington State, yes, yeah. yes, big fans of apples up there. <laughs> they love apple, and um, we've we've so we've done a lot of cons. We've probably done. Are we approaching like 20, 25? Oh, okay. Wow, probably, yeah, that's probably, weird. Approaching twenty. I got a question. You yeah. say like, oh, we've done these cons, and it put me in a horrible mind space, right? Mm, mind right. space. Why is that? Mind space. Mind Ooh, good space. voice. Ooh, that didn't... Mind space. Mind space. Right. Yeah. Welcome. To mind Abacus, <laughs> your show is on. <laughs> get her out of here. <laughs> Security, get her out of here. Uh, uh, so here's my question. So the Super Bowl, when that is hosted by uh, a, a, a town, a city. Yes. Phoenix in this, in this year's instance. This year's instance, yep. Phoenix. So far as we know. You never know. There could be a Bane situation. Could right. Be, right? It could be the stadium could be taken over. Third voice. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Phoenix. Right? That's, yeah. Yeah. It's very hot here. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not even covering my mouth with my hand. I don't know. Talent. It was, I don't Warner know. Brothers. <laughs> Steve, Joe. 
Listen to this. Wait till you get a load of this. <laughs> I was born in the darkness. I don't know if I can do that. I was born in the darkness. I was born yeah. in the darkness. You merely lived there. You merely moved in next door. You merely kissed Abacus in the darkness. (laughs) Anyway, what were we going to say? Here's my thing. Yes. It is a commonly known thing. Yeah. Common knowledge that wherever the Super Bowl is happening, uh, sex workers. Yes. Will fly out to that city because it is an extremely busy thing. Yeah. Is that true? They're in high demand. Yeah. I'm not making this up. This is no goof. Who, really? Yeah. yeah. Who was? It's just interesting. The people that I would expect to go to the Super Bowl, the idea of them also mixing in like having paying people for sex in the same weekend seems weird. Is that I mean, weird? They're, it's it's a tourist thing. You're away. It's you know there's a weird celebration element. Yeah. Wow. I like how you started with it's a tourist thing. Like yeah. you just well, like well, well you got to th- see the sights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go to the Grand Canyon and we're gonna go. <laughs> okay. We're, we're gonna, gonna go to a cinnamon. We're gonna go to. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go have sex with a lady. Yeah. Uh, and then I was thinking we right, Mount Rushmore. Yeah. F- following that logic, quite the commute. <laughs> is, is sex work popular around Orlando? Maybe. I don't know. That's an interesting thing because it. I yeah. mean, I guess I, it's, the, it's weird. I think of the Super Bowl and I think of NBA All Star Weekend as like wow. stripper and sex workers go to those destinations. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, yeah. I get the idea. Why are of you being stroking like, that piece of metal while you're thinking about it? Because now I'm going to the Super Bowl. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, guys, I'm going to the Super Bowl <laughs> and I'm not seeing the game. <laughs> so who won? Well, what's me? What's interesting is like I I was actually reading last night. There was I, you know I go on Reddit once in a while and it'll be like on Ask Reddit. It'll be like what's the kinkiest thing you've ever done? What's the most fucked up thing you ever saw? Mm-hmm. And someone said, um, if you it's like if you work in Disney World or you even vacation in Disney World, it's like go to the bars, go to the clubs. There's a ton of women there who are looking for like one night stands and just like vacation sex. And I wonder if this is kind of similar. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's interesting. There's got to be a name for that. Yeah. Vacation sex? No, no, no. The women like at the Disney World thing. Ooh. There's got to be a name for like Se- cougars sex- at the Disney ca- thing. Sexketeers. Yeah. Sexketeers. Yeah. Blousketeers because you pull up their blouse. Maybe. Who's wearing a blouse? But uh, they also have to, in my <laughs> mind, they're, you, they're very you question, cougary. You question your own joke? In my mind, they're they're middle-aged. Yeah. yeah. Ah. You know what I mean? Ah, yes. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Cuban B. Uh, no. Four but, voices. So here's my... Thank you. So here's my question. If it is common knowledge that sex workers migrate to... The Super Bowl. Yeah, they're repelled by Comic Con. <laughs> but do you think Ooh. sex workers go to cons? Also, if they don't, they are missing a literal trick here. Yeah. I will say bring your costumes. There's a lot of dress like, you know, listen, sh- and just show put it out want. there. Like, yeah, who do you want? You want you want Batgirl? You want Batgirl to show up? Voice five. You want Batgirl to show up? All right, bad girls are going to show so, up. So you I'll say this: just nothing. I, I think I, I went to. I, I'm looking I, you I, in I, the I, eye. I was trying to think of a funny response. And way it didn't to happen. improvise with that one. You just stared. I, I, <laughs> I told you he does that sometime right before this episode. <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? You did. You did. <laughs> so anyway, so that was that was the fun barrel meeting that they had without me. <laughs> I called you. You didn't show up. So anyway, I call. I called Chuck back. No response. I was in a meeting. We were making out. <laughs> oh, I was in a meeting. We were in a meeting. <laughs> I was in a meeting. That was a very Seinfeld. Um, no, I was going to say, because people do want to feel comfortable at Comic-Cons, and yeah. also there's a family element to it, there's a lot of stuff at Comic-Con that's like zero tolerance for like sexual harassment. Of and course, I think, of course. Yeah. I, but I think way more than like a, like a, like yeah. a sporting event. It's almost like frowned yeah. upon to even mention anything. But I'm not sexual. saying they're not... They're not which really got selling, me in trouble at the Christina Ricci panel. They're not selling their wares at the con. That's not, not what I mean. Like yeah. there are not sex workers showing up at the stadium. I get it. I get they're it. They're just in town because right. they know that the circuit is there, right? Yes, I get uh, it. Because that is a thing. It's a circuit based kind of thing too. That's interesting. Uh, and I do think like a con. Yeah. It's right there. Like yeah, it's so right. obvious. I agree. Maybe I should become a pimp. Yeah, a comic con. No. Pimp. A venture capitalist. <laughs> that sounds better. I have an idea. Do I smell a sixth voice? Do I smell 
disruption? Am I going to change the game? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm a disruptor. I'm a disrupt sex the market. work disruptor. Yep. So, oh, no, that's the police. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's going on out there? That's six. That's voice six. There you go. So uh, <laughs> we've been doing cons for a long time. And it's it, it's funny because I didn't realize how many we've done, I think, yeah, until you just mentioned that. Yeah. Which ones do you think we've struggled with? Um, I, I think our first couple we struggled with because... What were the first ones? I'll, I'll, I'll say this. To Ray... Let's say you're moderating a panel yeah. for a celebrity. Sure. Uh, some, how many questions are you preparing? This is, oh, people don't know about yeah, this. Yeah. A lot of people don't know about this. Right. How, let's yeah. ask him. How long would the panel be? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Yep. I'm going to prepare, probably, I'm going to shoot for 20. And if I, if I say I have 20 varied questions with yes. a few that have a flow, right. mm -hmm. then I will feel confident that there will be some other stuff there but I will probably try to shoot over 20. So here's here's the thing. Part of it is a QA and a with the audience. So yeah, the so X, they're going to ask questions. Right. Well, the X factor is you don't really know how many people are going to show up. Right. What about the it factor? You don't know You don't know if the audience that shows up is a very vocal audience. Right. You don't know if like if it's a slow time. During, Shy nerds. If, right. if you do it during, during a slow time during the day, people might be just in the room chilling out and not really even know exactly a, that much about the celebrity you're interviewing. Mm-hmm. So you could walk in and the panel could be packed and you can do one question and throw the audience and you're good. Yeah. yeah. That, and then, that was this one. I think I had two questions for uh, Rob and Maurice. And then sometimes like we have been in situations where I'm like, I think we need more pa questions. And Brad's like, shut up. Uh, well, I'm like, you know, we, we've we've had guests on the podcast. We can have a conversation on stage. Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then. But yeah, see, that's the thing is there's two of you as well. Yeah. Well, so, so at the time there was. Yeah. So. Then you show up, and sometimes there's not anyone in the audience really, and they mm -hmm. don't have any questions. Yeah, and you realize that you have to kind of fill the time with a person that you don't know yeah. who's used to being directly interviewed as opposed to having a conversation. Right, right. So it's it's actually a really weird job. Yeah, and when we do it, I know that people think of us as like podcasters. We've been podcasting for like 13 years. Yeah. So it's easy for us to have a conversation, but interviewing someone on stage is really different. Yeah. And we'll do actually like a ton of research. Of course, what, you what, have what, to. What yeah. were the first ones we did? Uh, Chad Lindbergh, who was in... He was the baby. Fast. He was the Lindbergh baby. <laughs> uh, he was in the first Fast and Furious film. He was the oh. mechanic that got killed. Yeah. Oh. Remember that guy? Well, the Lindbergh the baby jetting. got killed too. Yeah. So. Well, oh, definitely. Old age. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, well, and then the charmed, <laughs> the charmed reunion panel with uh, Piper and Leo. Yes, and you know which ones are they? Um, this was Holly. one of the main charms. Was Dowerty there? No, no. Oh, too big. Mm -hmm. Well, so basically, I think in Charmed, there's uh, and Brad kind of got his ass handed to him by one of the Charmed. Remember this? You got harmed. I got harmed by Charmed. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> no, it's like we did the research. Yeah, and I think what happened was at the beginning of Charmed, there was three. Witches, and then by That's the end, rude. And then by the end, there were <laughs> there were four. Yeah, and so Brad said something about the hocus pocus witches and them, and how it's the same number. I didn't say it. I didn't. Oh say shit! It. You it's did happening. say it. I don't think I said it. Can, Can we put a bet at the table? Fight, no. fight, I fight. I want to bet. So Brad said something about them being three sisters, and mm. the girl was like, "Um, four sisters," and yeah. you were like, "Oh, want to bet?" Nope. If, <laughs> if you say it happened, then it must have happened. Uh -oh. This is a, they are being petulant. That's a petulant response. This is Four. a mom who's going to lose it when the guests <laughs> leave. <laughs> it, it, it kind of is because. Yeah. Do you think I said it? I, I Maybe I said it, but I feel mm -hmm. like you wrote that joke. I thought, I thought when we did that panel, <laughs> I wrote the serious questions and you wrote joke questions. And oh. so one of your, I think your question <laughs> was who would win in a fight between the Sanderson sisters and the Charmed sisters. So if I did get harmed by charm, yeah. it's because I was following the lead. Because the question was farmed. The question was farmed. You're farming out your work. You're farming out your work, and that's why you got harmed by charm. I'm not farming anything. You farmed the question, you got harmed by charm, now I'm alarmed. Hold on. We sat down to write 20 questions. Yep. And I wrote 10 serious questions and Chuck Animal, was like, vegetable or mineral. Uh, Chuck, Chuck was like, I don't know, I'm going to ask her what uh what kind of chocolate she'd like in her cauldron. <laughs> you piece of shit. So these what happened. Well, first of all, question number 1. I don't know. These are all written by uh Chuck Stein, by the way. <laughs> Does magic make you come harder? 
<laughs> no, hold on. Okay, hold on. we don't like that question. I'm just, I'm it's, it's really interesting because this happened so long ago that let's just let's agree to just, let's agree to agree on this. Yes, we probably neither of us really remember what happened. No, 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 okay. certainly not. But here, I will say, I it, was I was harmed you know at a different panel, and I and I remember that. I don't, I don't remember it at this one. Okay, you so know who doesn't office, remember? Doherty. So hold yeah, on. So there. Shannon. Yeah. So. If I did write that question, though, you absolutely wrote that question. But if I wrote the Sanderson sisters of the Charm sisters, then you might have ab libbed three on three. Yeah, that that's possible. Then that wouldn't be my mistake. No, yeah. no, no. But I don't remember saying yeah. that. Okay, well, I, you know, I remember you know Kate who, Flannery uh, chastised me. Yeah, and you know who? Oh, you, yeah. You know who would say four is the fourth one? Yeah, yeah. Um, which so probably Rose McGowan. I don't know. Alyssa so you, Milano. Was, I, I don't remember which one came in late. Rose McGowan was the fourth. Didn't you say earlier that they all look alike to you? Yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. That's so yeah, weird. I wasn't talking about witches though. No, no. <laughs> so I, I keep making jokes about being just nineties pale women. Yes. yes. Yeah. So Comic Con, <laughs> the pale women. The yes. Connecticut Comic Con was the first con we did. I think so. It, it, well, maybe Big Apple Con was the first one we did. And that no, was, I don't think so. Then, then I think we had to use our previous cons to get to New York to yeah. do that. Um, but we started working with this group called Altered Reality, mm-hmm. and they do the Rhode Island Comic Con. And Rhode Island Comic Con... That's going to be the name of my uh, traveling sex worker yeah. fucking <laughs> Comic Con carnival. Uh, yeah. Altered Reality. You know what you could do? Where I can I can just pretend to be other agents and people. and Because of all like, your voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And go, yeah, I'm Steve. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> right, right. Listen, you want, you want one of the ladies? Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, well, we're doing a villain package this week. You want Catwoman? Yeah. No. no I, Poison she's... Ivy? No. Yeah. All right. No. Yeah, could I have Mr. Freeze? Uh, you want, I, you I want, want a, Mrs. Freeze? I want a woman dressed up as Mr. Freeze. You, oh, we get that all the time. <laughs> you, want to, you want to do the Schwarzenegger? So, yes, please. So, all right, I'll tell her. Thank you. And it's just me putting a wig on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you turn around. And there's a wall of wigs, <laughs> and I take it down, and then I look in the mirror and I go, mm, "I want your shoes, your boots, and your motorcycle <laughs> <laughs> just to get ready." And I get it that's, all wrong. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Thank stuff. you. I appreciate it. Um, but uh, that's really funny. The the idea of pretending to do the voice on the phone as different agents. And then whoever they pick is just a wall of wigs. <laughs> it's yeah. also you. It's so funny. Yeah. But well, um, now to bring it back to cons in a fun way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love I, this fight of the charmed fight. The charmed <laughs> you, fight. You yeah. threw me under the bus with the witches from Charmed. I love that. Yeah. That's hilarious. Uh, it's only one of the witches. You, I, you probably can't say this. We could say it. Like who was the hard <laughs> person? Yeah. 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 See? <laughs> well, oh, I was going to say in the pants. Well, so. Um, but we did get in trouble for telling a story about one of the people that we yeah. moderated for. Right. Which made they, them... They rubbed you the wrong way. Yes. Yes. Um, they... His name. So they... Uh, was also... <laughs> Abacus. Abacus. Yeah, Abacus. No, after we did this, we got yeah. in trouble. And then they said, when we come back, we have to sign NDAs. Mm. And then I was like, ah, I forgot to sign my NDA. NDA for Chuck Staten stands for not doing app. <laughs> 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 not doing anything. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. We we love Ultra Reality. We yeah. love Mario. Yeah, yeah, of course, fun. sure, yeah. Um, but they've had us. I think that they ran Comic Con in Connecticut. Yes. Um, but they run Rhode Island Comic Con, which is like a huge con. And I don't know that much about the con circuit, or I didn't know before I was involved. But I've been working with the Tell Em Steve Dave guys for years who were on the show Comic Book Men, and they were doing cons. So we kind of... Yeah. I had a little bit of inside knowledge from that. And there are different levels of cons in terms of like uh, kind of the kind of guests they have, right. how big they are. And Rhode Island Comic Con just happens to be a huge, huge successful Comic Con to the point where I think a couple of years ago... They had to like evacuate the whole building because they had over a hundred thousand people in the yeah, same they, place. Yeah, they had to stop time. letting people in, and so yeah. the line outside this, just got progressively longer yeah, because yeah. they were so like, "Oh, we, we we were planning on people leaving, they didn't." So yeah, but they get like huge people, like William yeah. Shatner, Kevin Smith came. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, and we've had a lot of fun doing it. That is cool. I I, I love that idea because like I I've never been to a comic con. Yeah, yeah, I've never been. I've always been. Um, 
I've always been intrigued. I kind of want to go. And like the Rhode Island Comedy Connection, they always have a booth at yes, the Rhode yes. Island Comic Con. And so like the offer's there, but I'm just like, I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm never 100% sure. Well, you should take Finn. And You guys have so yeah, much fun. I, now he's maybe old enough where that would be okay. Right. For sure. For uh, sure. I know like I did, uh, I was doing a weekend at Comics, the yes. comedy club. Yep in uh connecticut yes and that's was, where comic-con was okay I, yeah. I don't know if it was that one no it was, was a different no one. it was a different because uh, this is con. recently yeah and they were doing it and it was uh yeah because we were doing the podcast at that point and I, kevin conroy yes that's was right. at the con right. yeah the voice of batman he's may, he is my he, batman may he rest in peace of course yeah. r.i.p r.i.p yes. uh, rest in batman mm-hmm. yeah uh like he is genuinely the voice of batman to me yeah. yeah like people always talk about like oh is it michael keaton is it this person right. blah, blah, blah. no it's it's kevin conroy yeah. like that is batman to me chuck yeah. staten is my batman mm. mm-hmm. and brad is my superman mm-hmm. wolverine Punisher, Jason Todd. Ooh, it's Jason Todd. Yeah. Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, so I really Sonia. I uh, Sonia. so I <laughs> Sonia Blade. I reached out to Lee Leshin, my uh, producing partner, who was the the fantastic producing partner in Ray Harrington Must Content. Yes, and would help reach out to different people to do the interviews. Right, right I did yeah. a lot of interviews on that show. Right. Yeah, your last podcast. Yeah, and uh, uh, Kevin Conroy was at the the con, and I was like. I got to do this, please. But he wasn't coming in until Sunday, and my stuff was Friday, Saturday. I was yeah. like, oh, it didn't work out. Oh, well, next time. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, he passed. I know. And it kills me um, because he's one of those guys that just had like such a gen. Like, there are people that get, uh, that get attached to a character that start to um, not like that they're attached to that character, that start to right. resent it. Yeah. And Kevin Conroy was a guy who like held the fucking mantle like yeah. he, like, yeah. or the cowl right yeah. like he really really appreciated what he had and cared about the character and was careful about uh you know what things he chose to voice batman for right and he would do interviews and stuff and podcast things and there were times where he was just like i can't say that yeah like people would ask him to say a thing and he's like i can't have that out there yeah batman's not gonna say that yeah and i'm like oh yeah. kevin conroy you know what i mean yeah. yeah uh the only other experience was i was in in minnesota and uh i was doing a sh- uh a weekend there right and i was with derek Furtado. i brought him with me to open and uh the hotel they put us in was uh like a ramada i think because there was the okay. the regular condo that they had they were redoing it oh, they okay. were getting it remodeled so we got put in this ramada and there was a horror con going Ooh, on Ooh, spooky and it was like a not great Ooh, con spooky but for the wrong reason <laughs> sad <laughs> yeah different sad, spook. scary not spooky yeah, yeah yeah and it was so weird because there weren't enough people to make it a big thing it yeah. was in the ramada right yeah. you know what i mean yeah. there weren't enough people to make it a huge thing but there were enough people to see horror people out uh, doing stuff yeah we got back from <laughs> we got back from one of the nights and there was a there was a couple outside arguing. Uh oh. And it was a woman in a wheelchair. Yeah. And a guy, and the guy was dressed as, I don't know, just some horror thing I Got didn't it. recognize. Yep. And the girl was dressed up as well. I think they were both just like creepy. Like okay. that was yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. They had a huge fight, and he walked up the stairs to the door, opened the door, said something to her. And slammed the door and went into the hotel. Mm. And then she is crying. Yes. And at the bottom of the stairs. Yes. And Derek and I are just sort of there. Yeah. yeah. And we looked at each other and we were like, what's the call? Yeah. yeah. Do you help them up the stairs? Right. right. But they are in a vulnerable moment and they're crying. Right. Yeah. And I don't know what to do. I know. So we stood there. And we waited. Pushed her wheelchair to traffic. <laughs> <laughs> no witnesses. He's, he's really never going to forgive himself. Yeah. And I wonder what that would sound like. Yeah. No, but, 
<laughs> but we were our, like we were the two of us like having a polite off yeah, together. Right. Like, what do we do? What's the thing? What's the call? What do we yeah. do? What's the thing? And thankfully, one of their friends came out yeah. and like helped her up the stairs and and all that uh, all that stuff happened. Right. But it was such a bizarre weekend to be like going about our day yeah. and turn the corner and be like, oh, there's three Freddy Kruegers smoking cigarettes, yeah. right? It was so weird. But yeah, I've always, so I've been intrigued and I'm yeah. always jealous when you guys do it because I'm like, ah, oh, see, that seems like really fun. Right. I'll, I'll say this. But it, the work must be kind of weird because you you must feel responsible for how well the panel goes. Yes. 100%. E- yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. though exactly. it's a lot of times I'm sure it's on them. Yeah, yeah like, I, like one of the things that I will say is uh, when we moderated for uh, Meatloaf and Barry Bostwick, you, who you know who that is? Yeah, he was the he was the boss on Spin City, but he also played Brad yep. in Rocky Horror Picture Show. Not me, right, Brad, right. And, a different Brad, and, right? And Meatloaf was Meatloaf in Rocky Horror Picture Show, and no Eddie, yeah, Eddie, yeah. And uh, you. so basically, uh, Meatloaf didn't. He was like, "We don't need a moderator." That's not how he said it, but he said that. And um, how did he say it? Uh, you know, similar. And did so, it sound like. No, <laughs> and then I break into a yes. perfect meatloaf. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. But he, I can only do meatloaf towards the end. He was basically like, "We, you don't need to be. We don't need a moderator." And Barry Boswick was like, "We do need a moderator. You should come out." But we decided not to go out because mm. meatloaf didn't really want one. And what happens is. Meatloaf like, don't need no sides, is what he said. <laughs> he did. He did. That would be great. Yeah. Moderators kind of get to corral the conversation. Right, right. Pull it towards this. Start, talk to this person for long enough. Say, you know, call the next person. Kind of feel out the room and and, and really balance the Q&A and yeah. make sure that everyone's kind of getting as served as they can. And also be the bad guy in terms of, here's how many questions we have time left for. Here's how much time there is left. This is exactly the role that I would have as the sex worker manager. <laughs> right, right. You're holding I, up a 10? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm the bad guy when I need to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, this is... So that's that's a big part of it. Yeah. So it's funny. So we started out... We definitely early on did uh, Chad Lindbergh, who is the driver, that, the mechanic that got killed in Fast and Furious 1. Yeah. We did... He's also tr- a ghost hunter, but I don't remember he was a ghost the hunter. specific he name of his show. Yes. Yeah. And oh, not as a character. No, no. It was a real ghost hunt. Oh. It was like A&E. Yes. Okay. Did. All right. And then um, we did the Charmed panel... But what were the first Rhode Island Comic Con panels we did, you think? Um, it was uh, Billy Zane, right? Oh, Billy Zane. Ooh, no, yeah. That's this, a good one. He, here's what's awesome. And again, I, I want to be really clear. Like The guys at Alter Reality have been awesome with us. Yeah. And they've actually said to us, you know, every year these celebrities end up coming and doing panels. So it can get repetitive if you guys have different ideas instead of a panel to do with someone Please bring it to the table. And we actually did one year. We do this bit called Bradley Drawn. Yeah. Ray named the bit actually. Yep. Oh, remember you were the one that came I up with did? the name. Yeah. We used to call yeah, it. Chuck right. and, we used to call it Chuck and Brad Reimagined Blank. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. you were like, oh, you get a shorter name. Bradley Drawn oh, is good because yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, badly yeah. drawn. Yeah. yeah. You came up with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and we would we do this bit at the Comedy Connection. We've done it at other clubs and stuff like that, where we take a movie that's very famous, like Jurassic Park. Brad is not Steel a good Magnolias. artist. Yeah. yeah, Brad's not a good artist. Fried so, greed tomatoes. So he'll redraw the entire movie. Eighty for Brady. <laughs> It'll Bridges be like of Madison County. Basically, we keep it to like huge blockbusters like Jurassic Park, Avengers, Back to the Future, Spider Man, stuff that a lot of people know. Brad will redraw every scene from the movie, and they'll be terrible. His artistic renderings are awful, really bad. And I'll take that, and on stage, I'll write a new narration really behind the scenes. It's Brad and I writing it yeah. together yeah. and taking his drawings and making a new story out of it according to what they look like. And it crushes. We can like, like when we oh, do sure, it, yeah. it's like when people come out, even people that have no idea what they're going to see, they're like, oh, I saw yeah. a thing about Jurassic Park. I guess I'll come. People love it. And so when Rhode Island Comic Con approached us with this alternative uh, panel idea and we were doing it for Brian O'Halloran who plays Dante in Clerks, we were like, can we do Clerks Bradley Drawn? Yeah. And if you remember, this is actually a kind of a fun story. I guess we'll close on this because this is fun. Sure. So we were like, this will be really, really cool and people will be excited for it. But we couldn't get confirmation that he was okay with it. Mm. And so Brad had drawn all the drawings and we usually do it just myself and Brad and Brad does the narration. This was kind of an elevated version of it where we actually were going to have Brian O'Halloran on stage with his own script playing Dante as the movie happens around him. That's right. fun. That's right? fun, yeah. 
but we couldn't get confirmation, so we had to write two versions of it. Yeah, one yeah. for just Brad and I, if we had to do it without him, and one with him in it. And up to the day of the show, we didn't get any confirmation. We had known Brian O'Halloran a little bit. I right. met him a few times over the years through Kevin Smith. And the day of the show, I went up to him like, hey, man, what do you think about this Bradley Drawn thing? And I gave him the script. I said, do you want to look it over? He goes, I trust you. And we just did it at yeah. Rhode Island Comic Con. He came out and he murdered it. Amazing. We were like, your whole role is you're being forced to do this and yeah. you think it sucks. Yeah. And so he reads his lines and throws his hands yeah, up. Yeah, He's yeah, very yeah. like much like That's Dante. That's great, yeah. yeah. But the Billy Zane one that Brad was doing... We thought, and we thought about this afterwards. Yeah, Brad killed it with Billy Zane. They got along really well. You he, guys had a great talk. He was a great guy. You, you exchanged numbers. You exchanged numbers. Uh, not quite that great. No, but we then were he like, saw your relationship with Brad, or sorry, with Chuck, Chuck and yeah. he got very upset. Jealous. Yeah. And he got a gun. Yeah. And he was chasing you around his, a boat. His drawings of you were a little straight. No. So, yeah. Uh, but we thought about the idea. What if we did? We redid Titanic. From the point of view of Billy Zane. That's and fun. And he played himself. Yeah. That would be so that would be fucking very fun. funny. Yeah. yeah. Where he was the hero. Yeah. Like we thought, like he believed himself. He there was doing I the right was thing. bringing my wife, my <laughs> fiance, onto the boat. <laughs> and this urchin <laughs> is trying to steal my wife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I did what any man would do. Yes. Billy got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. Yeah. Billy got a gun. Yeah. It's like, I, uh, we didn't need that. <laughs> also, by the way, James Cameron, like, I get you have to add this, like, storyline into your thing to make uh, all the high school girls go see your movie eight times. My wife did that when she was in high school to see Titanic. Perfect. Mm -hmm. The Like, when I do think about it, if you didn't know Titanic, like, if it was pre-Titanic coming out, yeah. and James Cameron's talking to you, and he's like, so I did Titanic, this is the thing, I added this romance that's absolutely right. fictional, that everybody's going to remember more than the people that actually died. Right. Yes. Uh, and... Just for fun, there's a gun chase scene. No. There's a guy shooting at another guy with a gun, yeah. you know, while the boat is sinking, while <laughs> while real historical people are dying. Yeah. Yeah. There's a fun pew, 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 shoot 'em up scene. Yeah. yeah. You'd be like, uh, hey James, maybe let's recut this site. Like, maybe the stakes are elevated enough. Yeah. yeah. With the boat going down. Yeah, with the, the historical event. Yeah. Maybe uh, we don't need the phantom shooting at basketball diaries yeah, while this yeah, is yeah, happening, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That That's, is insane. Yeah. Isn't oh, the, it insane? The, Titanic is a really, like, as much as it was a big thing and a lot of a lot of teen girls loved it. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's it's really good. It's a really good movie. It is, I, I, I understand. It's yeah. gripping is what yeah. it is. But it's, like, almost, like, too much. Like, we watched it in preparation for that panel. Sobbing. Weren't and you? and the, the, the old people. And, like, oh, yeah. The thing, and then the mom and that the baby in the water. That happened when I was on that cruise. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> exact same thing. <laughs> I, 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 I was one of the people on the pad. I like Ray in his backpack with sunglasses on it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you you see a, a wealthy man chasing a less wealthy man, and you just stick your foot out and you trip the first guy, and you're like, I got hey, you. I got you, buddy. <laughs> and then you put your hands in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good citizen. He jumps into a lifeboat <laughs> by into himself. A lifeboat and lets it down. <laughs> This one's comedians only. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. Yes. We have a lot of fun. But yeah, thanks for checking out the panel. It's fun. I know it's a weird thing. Not a lot of comedy podcasts have this kind of stuff. Yeah. But I think it's fun. Yeah. I think it's a real yeah, fun we, we, And it's a valuable thing. And I, I think it's a lot of fun to hear that kind of, you know, it's a panel, yes, but it's also an interview. It's yeah. an interview. Oh, for sure. And I think we put in enough funny um, oh, talent yeah. here yeah. as well, right? And, and they're hilarious they're great now, let me ask yeah. you if you had to save one of them on the titanic <laughs> is it pinky or the brain i want pinky and the brain hugging each other like the old people in the I, you know i'm 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 jumping you know out of the life you know what we're going to do today <laughs> the same thing we every we do every day die together <laughs> i'm jumping out of the lifeboat Smarf. and giving the other one <laughs> <laughs> that's the final the bubbles <laughs> Oh, you're great guys. Thank you, everyone, who, every fan of Pinky and the Brain who didn't know what they were getting into. <laughs> Fell into this. When they checked out this episode. With their children. Yes. <laughs> oh, look, it's that thing I Gather showed you. Gather around the YouTube yeah. children. Yes. 
Um, thank you all so much. Uh, we've got we've got some more panels from uh, RA Comic Con coming up in the next couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, funbearablepod at gmail.com or find us on socials at funbearablepod. Yeah. Always happy to get in contact with all y'all. Yeah. Do you guys have anything else? That's it. No, I, just great job. And uh, yeah, I sure. can't wait for the next for one. For the man of a million voices, Ray Harrington. I think I'm up to maybe 12 right now. <laughs> for the man of 12 voices, Ray Harrington. The man of three voices, Chuck Staten. Oh, but those. Wait, that was wrong. It was the wrong one. <laughs> and the man working oh, on getting a voice. I'm the man with one half of one voice. And the man who needs a voice. I'm Brad Rohr. Thank you so much for checking this out. And we're sorry for being fun bearable. <laughs> <laughs>